last script the last script that we recorded mm -hmm. i'm going to do the correlation on that okay. and, and then i'm going to set up all the parameters on that okay. one okay yeah and then i my plan is going uh, uploading that script in the controller and execute a short test with that okay now take a look here i'm going to open a script that i have previously created where did i create the script did i forget no no i created it in my preferred place so let's see if it is still there so scripts and then i think um, um sign up users that was the script right now in sign up remember that when you open application when we initially open application we do not have a transaction do we have a transaction no why why we don't have a transaction because when we are opening application we do not have an option to create a transaction so what do we do we create a transaction here so that will be 0 1 Now I am. When you create a transaction, you will have to end that transaction. And when you are ending transaction, what you will have to do? Right now. So after doing that, what is your first task? Remove all of the unnecessary think tank because you are starting a transaction here. Sign up, right? click on sign up you are starting the transaction here and you are ending the transaction here now in between if you have a think time here can you see you have a think time here this think time is going to be counted inside click on sign up when you are clicking on sign up it is going to display it took 66 seconds plus some more seconds if you have a think time inside the transaction so what is your task first remove all of the unnecessary think times how do you do that select it find all and start from the bottom and remove line by line right you go there remove all of the think time unnecessary think time line by line right okay now 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 what now nothing okay now we we have removed the think tank but actually we need the think tank we need that we have removed the think tank but we need the think tank so why you remove that because they were not in the they were not in the right place they are not in the right place. I'm going to put them in the right place. What is the right place? After each of the transaction, before starting another transaction, in between the transaction, I will have the think tank. Now, let's see where I have all the end transaction. So, I have, how will you select it? Can you see? I am selecting that end transaction and find all and I will be starting from the can you see after that sign up are you going to add a think time after sign up no. after sign up when you are done with one iteration are you going to put a think time no because it's it will be a pacing time pacing time. Pacing, time. pacing time it will be pacing time now so where will i put the all of the think times see i am ending transaction here i am going to add a think time here for how long let's say 20 seconds for our learning normally in real application we will be putting 20 seconds for our learning we will be putting 2 seconds so that it 
it doesn't make us delay okay in real life you will be put in 20 second every transaction you will be put in 20 second and now i will mark the end of the transaction with some decoration Iteration and transaction. Is it same? No. Sir, I think that after first process, break end of the iteration is pacing time. Pacing time. Iteration is when I am done with all of the transaction. Let's say I am opening application, logging in, mm -hmm. signing off. When I am done with all of this, then one iteration is done. Okay. So, are are talking of it? And when you are giving the thing time is in between the iteration. In between the transaction. transaction. The transaction is when you are opening application, this okay. is a transaction. It when you are logging in, that is a transaction. When you are signing up, that is a transaction. transaction. In between the transaction. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, take a look everyone here. I am putting think time at the end of each of the transaction. How I am doing it? Just notice it. How I am doing it. Okay. Can you see? I typed it once. And then I'm just uh, what I'm doing. I'm just now the purpose of putting those hash studies and uh, this one is this is a commented line to clearly display the end of each transaction. Select one of the end transaction. Press Control F. Find all. Now you have all of them. Right, start from the like here. You go from the bottom. See, this is the first. Uh, like, if you look at from the bottom, you can double click and go each of the. You can go each of the. Enter. Is it clear? Now, wha what is the purpose of this line with asterisk? Just to. Yeah, just it, it, it is commented out. It is commented out just you know to mark every transaction. It will not be executed. Okay. Now let's come to the point. So what we did, everyone, take a look. These these user, we opened the application and then we have submitted this user registration. Can you see automate code one? We have set up a password. We have our first name, last name. Our street address, our city, right? We have everything we are submitting here. Remember, when you click on sign up, we have to input some data. So we, we are sending all the data here. Now, can we can we register another user with same data? Can we register another user with automate same name automate code one? Can we? No, no. My my question here: Can I can I register another user with automate code one? No. 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 I can give the same password, same street address, same everything, but this this one will have to be different. This one will have to be different. But if I try to execute it with the same data, what will happen? So I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to execute it with the same data. An error has occurred. I'm seeing that uh, there is an error. So if you see mm -hmm. errors like that, now you touching the defect, right? Mm -hmm. If you take it, if you take it, then it then is a defect. defect yeah. Then it is a defect. Now uh, let me show you. It is uh, when I'm trying to execute it. It is. It is not taking it. So I'll have to close it. I'll have to start it back. So I'm closing it, and I'll be starting it back. Sometimes you will see no errors detected, but it will not go through. So what you will have to do, you will have to close it, and then you will have to start it. Back. Did you close it? I'm trying to closing it. See, I'm oh trying yeah, to close yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to close the script. And um, then let me open the script back. Okay, so now um, let me see if I have all the think tanks and stuff in the in the place here. We have it. I'm going to start execution.
so still it is showing that an error, error occurred script virtual user generator uh, there is a there is a problem in the script that is why it, it cannot move forward let me see what is the problem if i can identify it or i have to record it again creating issue right this is script was when i was trying to execute that issue it was creating when i was trying to execute that this script it was not going through so what i'm going to do can you see this regenerate script right i'll be clicking on that regenerate script then all of the modification that i did on that script they will be gone right all of the like i remove all of the thing time everything so can you see is gone i i did um, i did put the something in between transaction they are gone right now let me try to see if it runs yeah no everything is it is safe but what whatever modification we did did that is gone now can you see this script is continuously creating issue so this script what i will do i will go back to my base machine and in the base machine i will i'll go back to my base machine and i'll try to see what happens in the base machine okay so i am recording yeah i'm recording so this script you know as it is creating trouble here i'm going to go back to my base machine to see how it perform in my already so when i i am trying to register another user with automate code 1 with automate code 1 right with automate code 1 it is not able to do it now can you see okay now it was not able to do it the summary is this now wh what i will have to do i will have to in order to make the uh, registration successful instead of automate code one here instead of automate code one here i will have to give what actually is this uh, is this registration let me see what i am doing here so here i'm yeah i'm submitting the registration so, so in instead of automate code one what i'll have to do instead of instead of automate code one i have to give another one automate code two right but automate code two is al also registered right so what i'll have to do i'll have to give something that is not already registered let's say automate code 20 right automate code 20 and let's put a breakpoint here and try to execute it so uh, if automate code 20 is not already registered then it will be yeah. it will be our our now it will be submitting all the information now if this user is i think automate code 20 is username is already taken that means this user is already created now what i'll have to do i'll have to find something that is not created let me try with automate code 30 right let me see what happens now okay so if i try to execute it can you see it was successful right now each time i execute will i do the same thing i will change it i'll change it and do execution no what i'll do i will create okay now in that script what we did we created a user we have created a user and then we did login by that user is that correct we have created that user and in the later step of the user we have used that user to log in right right now let's say um, automate code one is already created everyone please look at here automate code one is already automate code one is already created now 
we are trying to log in by automate code one. Do you think we will be able to log in? Mm -hmm. Why? Log in? Yes. We should be able to log in? No, log out is not issue. We, we, we are trying to log in. Yeah, yeah, we will be able to log in? Yes. Mm -hmm. So here in, in this uh, line number 85, we are sending a request to the server. We are trying to log in using automate code 1. And we should be able to log in. If you go back to the application itself, here you'll be e manually you'll be able to log in if you go to the application itself let me go to the application itself from from there hp software load runner samples web if i go there the application is being opened Let me go to the application again. SP software, SP load runner, and then samples web. This one. So if you come here, if you try to log in using automate automate code one, and our password is L one two three four five L one two three four five. You can see that we are able to log in right now see here when i am moving forward right uh, when i'm moving forward here we are trying to log in can you see in this one we are sending the login request right now if i send this request here can you see it was not uh, not able to log in it failed and here it is saying that user session value is not correct <coughs> here it is saying that user session value is not correct so what is the problem uh, correlation. the correlation yes you are right the correlation can you see this value can you see this value we didn't correlate this value right now when we are logging in we are submitting the user id and password we are submitting the user id and what the password the password here instead of you know we do not want to keep any confusion we know our password is one two three four five right but because of that because of that it is because of that dynamic session id let me let me do it again you will see we will not be able to log in i'm executing it again so now we are we are automate code 30 we have already created right mm -hmm. now we are not able to move forward with automate code 30 can you see because we already have automate code 30 so what we will have to do again over there where we are putting automate code 30 we will have to make it automate code 31 and i do not want to keep any confusion regarding password see we have password and confirm password we will keep it in that way now let me try to do it again right so you are able to register automate code 31 is that correct so now if you come here if you come here what we are doing here in this request what we are doing here we are we are trying to log in by automate code 1 now can you see we are not able to log in by automate code 1 so what is the reason because of that correlation so to do the correlation what i will do i will use automatic automatic correlation method so i will select that value i will select that value here right i'll select that value and can you see correlate selection i'll be selecting correlate selection and then i will click on correlate now see instead of instead of that that dynamic value here right we have correlated and instead of we have set up a parameter now what it did now it is it has automatically set up a statement here in the opening application when you opening application it is 
to put a statement here when you give the correlation can you see it has automatically placed a statement here that will capture that value in that variable and we have used that now now again we have automate code 31 that is already registered so what we will have to put here we will have to put automate code 32 here 32 right let me do it जेनारेटेड now what we are doing we have registered automate code 32 mm -hmm. and then what is our next step our next step look at here everyone we are trying to look at everyone here we are trying to log in using automate code 1 so is it our purpose to log in using automate code 1 or automate code 32 which one what is our purpose our purpose is to log in using automate code 32 not not automate code 1 but we are just doing it we will be making the change now we are able to log in because we have correlate that value right now let's come to the point okay now every time i execute do i will i put the change that value no it will not work like that what i'm going to do can you see these parameters can you see these parameters i'll be going there i'll create a new parameter here and i'll put the parameter let's say p user and here can you see create table you will be selecting create table and then edit with notepad and you put let's say how many users we have registered so far automate code 32 so you need to start from automate code 33 and i want to register from automate code 33 to actually i want to register from automate code 33 to i want to register a hundred users so how many if i want to register a hundred users from automate code 33 let me open excel here let me open excel so that i can show you so i want to register how many users a hundred users let's say let's make it simple from 100 to from 101 to 200 if I select from 101 to 200, then how many users it will be? 99. No, no, from 101 to 200. 200. 200. 100. 100. No, it is 100. It is 100. <laughs> let, uh, let me show you 100. how it is. <laughs> you are subtracting from 100 to 200 to 101, right? No. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> because we don't know so much. Okay, yeah, take a look here. <laughs> Come here, where is my Excel? So this is my Excel. Right? I'm creating a new new Excel document. And how will I create 100 users? Auto automate code. Automate code one. O one, right? I want to start with automate code one, and then how will I create? Take a look, everyone here. Can you see how I created one hundred users? <laughs> From one one, I started. I I went up to. 200 and can you see what is the row number here mm -hmm. clear is it clear okay. if it is clear then i'm going to 
copy all of this. I'm going to copy what? All of this. Then let me go to my script itself. In the script, can you see edit with notepad? I'll be clicking on, I already clicked on edit with notepad. So my notepad is here. I'm going to, instead of value, I'm going to put all the values here. So I created the user from Excel. I brought it here. And always remember, just keep one empty line at the end of the parameters value. So when you are when you are in the last parameter if you click down arrow you will be able to go one more line you will be able to go one more line now i have the can you see now i have all of the username and can you see by name you will be selecting the user id by name what the user id now can you see sequential instead of sequential i will say unique i'll say unique and here right when all of the users let's say when all of the users will be registered will you be able to register any more like all of the register all of the users are registered will you be able to register another time the same user no, no. so when all of the users are registered i am asking about about the user when all of the users are registered, what I am asking? Exit out that B user. Right? Okay. Then, two things I set up. I set up by name. I have selected the T user ID. I, am, I have selected here. I have selected unique. And here, when all of the users are registered, abort. Abort. Exit out. Okay. Then, what is the parameter name T user ID? Now, I am going to go to my script instead of instead of putting when i am registering the user take a look here everyone when i am registering the user can you see when i am registering the user when i am registering the user i instead of automate code 32 what is the parameter i named over there p user id so i am putting that and i'll copy that so i am registering a user and then when i am logging in later on when i am logging in i am logging in here right instead of automate code one i i will be verify whatever user i am registering i will be verify that that user is able to log in so i am putting same thing here now if i execute take a look here take a look here now i do not want to damage i do not want to damage my 101 user i want to keep them intact so what i want to do in the parameter file i want to put another user here automate code automate code 33 because i want to keep these users i do not want to mess up with this user i will be using these users to execute the test so i am using some other user yeah I am adding some other, yeah, some more in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I want to execute one at two iteration. I I want to execute how many iteration? How many iteration I want to execute? Two. So how will I do that? I want to execute two iteration and also I want to see how my think time is working. How my think time is working. How my pacing time is working. So what I am going to do, I am going to go runtime settings. Runtime settings. I am going to go runtime settings. How many iteration I want? Two. two. Now, pacing time. Like when I am done with one iteration, how many time I want to wait? Let's say I am selecting. Can you see fixed here? Instead of fixed, I am going to select random. Instead of fixed, I am going to select random. And I am going to say from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, 
any uh, any time so my pacing time will be from 5 second to 10 second it could be 6 second 7 it could be 7 second my pacing time will be a random value pacing time so i am not putting pacing time in the script i am setting a random pacing time here remember previously you did fixed pacing time i am saying here a random a random pacing time from 5 to 10 seconds and then come to the log then come to the log remember here i am saying standard log i am not saying parameter substitution extended log i am not saying that come to the think time i want to say a random think time everyone take a look here random think time i want to say whatever think time i placed in the script everyone whatever think time i placed in the script 50 to 100 percent 50 to 100 percent so if it is two second in the script how what is the thing that i have two second so it could be one second it could be 1.5 second it could be 1.25 second it could be up to 100 percent 100 percent means two second you got it so in the script itself how many second i have two second how many second i have two second if you say 50 percent of two second what is the one if you say 75 percent of two second what is that 1.25 if you say 100 percent of two second what is that two, two second so my think time will be in between 50 to 100 percent you got it i'm giving a random think time now i got everything let me let me let me do the execution i will you will practically see how think time is working here okay besides that remember when we execute the test right it was able to register our user it was able to log in right but can you see in the log can you see any of any the value of the uh, session id can you see the value of the session id in the log no. can you see any any scrambled any un, un understandable value here any un no right because in our log setting in our lex log setting we have we have what is the log setting we have standard log we do not have parameter substitution so what we will have to do extended log parameter substitution then we will see in the log we will be able to see that our parameter what is the value coming is it clear now let me start execution yeah yeah in the extended log in the extended log if you set up extended log then you will be able to see the value of this parameter over there now can you see here everyone everyone please take a look here please take a look here can you see um, this this line here so where it is coming from line number 53 LR think time 1.26 seconds. 1.26. Why it is 1.26? Yeah, we it it will be from 50 percent to 100 percent, 100 percent, right? Is it clear? Now all of the think time eventually all of the think time will be played accordingly. Now where are we? We are in this line. What we are doing here? We are submitting the. We are submitting the. User, user new user now so here i have p user id so what about if i go and with the old one of so the problem here is many of you are not able to answer anything I gave you homework that you didn't do it. Okay, so so folks, can can you tell me like what is your plan? Because I'm not getting any output from you. Like all of you need to be in the same pace. 
right? What is uh, like? What is your plan? Like, I got some of the output from them, but I didn't get any output from you. The same same stuff I am explaining here. Yeah, I am not video. like. That's why, like, we losing our time. Mm -hmm. the same video you have. Same video, Fiddler, mm -hmm. and this one the same. Every How step you can. Okay, so w what I am doing here, see th that is script is totally ready. I can put it in the controller and I can run it now. But before let me finish this uh, discussion here. So I am now submitting this user ID here and now after submitting it, you can see here that I am now I am trying to log in using that ID. Now if you take a look at the log, can you see here that the user ID? we have p user id 33 that means it is registered right so if i keep running if i keep running it will can you see now it is waiting a random amount of time for as a pacing time here it is waiting 134 now how many times like i will show you one iteration was uh, let me finish this execution right now let me show you can you see uh, if you take a look ending iteration right ending iteration if you take a look here waiting after ending the first iteration what is the time i waited 9.3570 why because we have set up a random wait time 5 to 10 seconds right okay now my script is ready so what I am going to do, I am going to take that script to the controller now and remember, take a look here, two of the, in the parameter pool, in the parameter pool, how many parameter I have now, right now? How many parameters I have now? You come to the last line and view status bar, how many parameter I have now? 105, 105, but remember the first line the first line is it a parameter no. no so then that means how many real parameter we have 104 out of that 104 these two are already these two are already what these two are already registered right these two are already registered remember that these two are already registered so i do not want to execute for these two user id so what i will have to do i will here this 33 and 34 is already registered how will you when i am executing if i don't want them how will you escape them no 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 delete no comment i don't want to delete i want to keep them here so what is the process we, we already did it we already did it. You guys need to come up with, with whatever we did. You guys need to come up with, with everything. Because otherwise, you know, I'm I'm just spending my time. If you do not follow it, what is the purpose of doing it here? So, I want to start execution from parameter 35, right? What is the parameter? 35. What is the parameter? 35. What is the line number for parameter 3? Parameter 35, line number 3, right? Now, can you see first? first data line first data line you move it up now can you see it is on line number 35 right we are we are able to do it right okay now i'm going to save it okay now my script is done my script is done i'm going to take this script i have set up runtime settings i have set up uh, Facing time, think time, log, everything, right? One other thing you will have to do in the runtime settings, make sure before you do that, how many, how many iteration I have here? Two. You will have to make sure that it is one iteration. Okay? And then you save it. Now my script is saved. Now let me start the, let me start the controller. So if I want to bring the controller, you will see in your computer, in your computer, uh, the controller is somewhere.
Okay, can anyone uh, help me relocating yeah, wireless controller? Like the one all the way down, all the the one Good job. Yeah, this is my controller. I'm starting it. Right. So when controller is being started, you can see this uh, that controller is started, right? So you will have to specifically focus here. That is another new part that we are discussing here. Yeah, yeah. is starting when controller is starting it will give you option right can you see you have option you can select script you can select script now I am can you see I am clicking browse now what is the script that I want to bring here I want to bring that sign up user right can you see I want to bring this one I am clicking open now that let me remove everything this one let me see if i can delete it delete it and then let me browse again this is the script that we were working right how will you know can you see 1249 so this is the script that we are going to execute now mm -hmm. yeah browse then can you see that it is added and click OK. Now you can see here the script came here in the in the controller, right? What you will do? Can you see basic schedule? First thing that you do, you select basic schedule. Okay. Now let's come to the runtime settings from here okay to get the the first thing that you do can you see load generators load generators can you see here load generators all load generators here you will have to in reality you will have load generators multiple load generators for generating load now what is load generators what is load generators? Load generators are again another some servers, some computers where we are generating the load. Let's say if you want to, if you want 100 users will be going into that application. Now 100 users will have machine to go into that application. Because if you try to go into let's say a thousand, if you want to generate a thousand users for, from a single machine, that machine will not be able to handle that load. So we'll have to select load generators. Now, in here we don't have any load generator. We'll be using local host, this machine for generating generating load. How will you select load load generators? Can you see local host? Can you see load local host? I'll be clicking local host. Okay, and then can you see here these these can you see this icon load generators? You will be clicking on load generators here, and how will you make sure that this load generators is working? Can you see connect? Can you see ready? Ready? That means it is. It will be able to. Will be able to use load generator by that local host. Now it is. If you see disconnect, that means it is already connected. Now here, some other thing. Can you see runtime settings? You click on it. You click on it. Runtime settings and can you see run logic we have one iteration and then can you see pacing we have 5 to 10 second random random in log we have parameter substitution extended log in think time we have 50 to 100 percent of two seconds so in the last script it's coming in the controller it's connected the script loaded here that's why we are able to see this same thing right and um, 
let me click ok and then you come here can you see number of b user number of b user now how many okay let's say you have you have 10 cards here so one card is here card one card two card three card four card five card six card seven let's say you have seven or card eight card nine card ten okay now to drive this 10 cards unless they are unless they are self driving car right to drive this car you need how many drivers? 10 drivers is it understandable to drive this 10 cars you need 10 drivers now now in our script itself how many users we have 100 we have we have 100 Four. Out of 104, two of them, out of 104, four, two of them, we already right executed. So how many left? 102, right? 102. Let's forget about that two. So how many we left? 100, right? Now, if you want to you want to drive that hundred users, how many driver you need? One hundred. How many driver you need? 100. To drive that hundred car, how many driver you need? One hundred. Okay. Now you don't have one hundred driver. Let's say in an application, concurrency is not one hundred. Concurrency is hundred. So con 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 concurrency is ten. Our concurrency is not 100, our concurrency is 10. But user ID, how many user ID we have? 100. 100. Right? We do not want to use the same user ID again and again. So what is the concurrency? 10. Right? Now we need to drive those 100 cars by the 10 driver. So what will be the policy? 10 driver. We have how many drivers? 10. How many cars? 100. So if we want to take that 100 car from here to Shampi, 10 driver will take 10 cars and drive it to Shampi. Then they will be coming here. They will take another. They will, be, they will take another 10 cars. They will be driving it to there. They, then will, they will be coming here. They will be taking another 10 cars. So how many times they will have to? Ten how many times? 10 times. If they drive 10 times then they will be able to finish all the cars moving over there is it clear this mm -hmm. this concept now in this script we have 100 cars that means we have 100 users we have how many drivers we are going to put 10 drivers 10 virtual users 10 virtual user is going to operate register these users for us now how many times how many times they need to do the register each user how many times they need to uh, ten times is it clear now see here total b users i am going to put 10 that is 10 driver right total b users how many b users 10 how many b users 10 now from here can you see this icon here can you see this B view script can you see that can you see that okay don't forget about that go to go to runtime settings go to runtime settings if you go to run logic how many each of the user how many times they will need to execute how many iteration they will need to execute 10 you put the 10 here you got it so here the number 10 b users b users they are our driver who is going to take take each, each of the data and register for us and each of the b users how many times they will have to do it 10 times. How many times they will have to do it? How many times they will have to do it? 10 times. Then all of the 100 data will be registered. Is that is the concept is clear? And to generate the load, what is the what is the uh, load generator they will be using? That local host. Right? Right? Now, now, see here, you can say when, when we have 10 B user, 
we can start all of the b users together or we can start let's say um, we can start user simultaneously let's say we want to start two user every five second every two user every every five second hmm? this is like remember when an application like not all of the users come at the same time let's say you when you go to best buy you go on your time when i go i go my own time right yeah. not all of the users jump into the application so you can you can gradually you know you can gradually make the user coming to the application to to create the real life scenario so out of that 10 user we have 10 driver right they will not start they, it is not a race right if it is a race they will take the 10 car they will start driving right mm -hmm. but it is not a race what we will do one driver will start two driver will start now and then another two driver they will be starting in fact 10 driver cannot go to parallel because there is there are not that many mm -hmm. lanes so what will do two drivers will go and after that two drivers will go after that two drivers will go in that way but in application 10 driver 10 user can start doing it but we are not going to do that we, we are going to generate two users will start then every five seconds two users will start is it clear no 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 we are fast we are deciding you know like how many um how, how many how many we gonna divide it and how many first run right and mm -hmm. first they're gonna uh the user how many users gonna go now after that also we are breaking it breaking it right breaking it so two, two, two will be yeah in reality in the application when you are putting a hundred users not all of the users jump into the application at the same time no, so you are distributing that uh, you said one time okay <coughs> let me tell you folks focus on here look 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 at me what i'm trying to say when we have 10 users not all of the 10 users are going to start working in the but remember, when two users are driving, they are on the road, they are driving. Yeah. When another two is starting, they are also driving. Mm -hmm. So how many working together? Four. When another two is are starting, then six. Six is using the application. When another two is starting, they are? Remember? Yeah. They are using the application at the same time, but they are gradually starting. When all of them are started, then they are... When all of them are started, then they are fixed, they keep running. Is it still confusing? Not all of them are uh, started at the same time. Same time, same but time. When, when all of them has started until they reach the destination, they keep driving. But then they are at the same time. 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 Both of us logging at the same time, so one of the second, and the other second for the at the time, so we don't mind now. Even though we start logging at the same time. we can start at the same time. To keep it simple, I can start all the users at the same time. But I'm trying to think the real situation. The real situation is not all of the all of the users start at the same time. So they start gradually, and when all of them are started, they keep running. They can keep running until their goal is in. Completed. Completed, right? Now, so I have, I have, there are, again, when you are executing test, this is just the basic, there are multiple things we will be learning here, okay? Now, can you see, I have two users every five seconds, they will be starting, right? And can you see, run until completion? We can say, run until completion, or we can say, run for five minutes, ten minutes, five or ten hours, okay? okay? So now we are saying run until completion and can you see everyone take a look here two users will be starting at five seconds then another two another two so after 10 seconds all of the 10 users will be will be starting and from there they will be keep executing now let me start execution here there might be there might be okay there might be problem but I'm going to start execution here results directory 
right let me create a results directory uh, results directory already exists over right uh, directory um, okay that thing i need to i need to set up here now take a look everyone here overwriting will delete all files they are saying our results directory will be created but can you see what is the path c users learn uft app data local temp res override so we, we will have to create a results directory too let's say no right now where we want to create our results directory everyone take a look here i want to save my results directory let's say in my desktop where is my desktop this is my desktop and i'm going to um, uh, create my results directory okay let me put in my c drive i'm going to create my result directory as a parf logs can you see parf logs i am selecting this folder and i am going to put let's say execution execution of 2016 and what is the date today 11 and what is the uh, sorry 12 11 okay uh oh, permission okay this one i am going to create the result directory somewhere else let me do the result settings now not in parf logs i am going to create it in the shared drive in the shared drive and then i am going to create a folder for this one okay now let me uh, see let me go back there can you see start scenario can you see start scenario here i am going to click on that Now can you see to it is starting the users two users at a time every 5 second it is increasing the users can you see it has started four users right and also take a look here can you see how many pass transaction also look at uh, transaction response time here double click here can you see you can see like each of the transaction how long it is taking you can see everything see i have started a performance test okay now what i hey, take a look here everyone can you see how many transaction passed and can you see that we are starting how it is going on so you can see that uh, average what is the response time so the maximum response time that we are seeing let me make it a little bit smaller this take a look everyone here so you can see that my response time most response time is actually action transaction can you see for the, this action transaction is actually the whole whole script to execute the whole script it is taking 8.152 for the whole script i'll give you detailed explanation how you do it but for can you see for opening application average response time is 0.54 second that means less than 1 second for uh, for login using created user it is less than 1 second for input customer info it is less than 1 second right can you see so our test is running we have so far one error can you see we have one error click on it click on it and what is the error you can see what is the error now cpu uses for load generator exceeded now can you see the load generator that we are using here if you go there local host right if you go to task manager go to uh, performance right can you see it is exceeding sometimes more than 100% can you see here the cpu uses the machine yeah. the cpu is going more than 100% mm -hmm. so our load generator is not able to handle the load generator that we are using for generating load here mm -hmm. it is the it is its cpu is not able to handle that much load our cpu it is not an application problem the 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 machine that we are using for generating load it is not able to handle the load so that's why we saw an error message 
the CPU uses for load generator is 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 not enough. Now our execution should be done. Now, can you see any failed transaction? How many failed transaction we have here? Zero. That means our the users hundred users there should be now we should be able to log in by using them. Is that correct? So uh, we have executed. See, we have executed a performance test. Our performance test is done probably. Yeah, our performance test is done. Now let's see what it's supposed to do, whether it was able to do. Now, what was the user that we have in the script? Yeah, we, we it's supposed to, if you go to parameter setup, can you see from 35, from 35, all the users should be what? Should be able to log in now. Now let me let me go there. Let me go there. Uh, where is my virtual machine? This is my virtual machine. Now if I go there, if I try to log in, automate code 35, and what is the password? L12345. Can you see I am able to log in? But how? How this user is how this user is registered? If I try automate code 150, right? 150 and L12345. Can you see uh, it is not I am not able to log in? Oh. Let's say 150. 150. Type in my zero. Oh. Hundred fifty. The problem here. The problem here. I cannot type their front end. It doesn't take that many characters. But when I am submitting it by load runner, it was able to submit. See, load runner is not a functional testing. We what we said. It is a non-functional testing. Why? Because it is not using the UI. It is doing. In the in the from the back door, right? In the front door, we cannot use even we cannot input 150. But it was it was able to do it from the back door. That is why it is not a it is not a functional testing. It is a non-functional testing. Now, in in their application, they do not have enough checkpoint. Although it is not taking 150 here or that many characters, but from the back door we are able to do it but they do not have enough checkpoint to check it now so automate code 35 automate code 36 that should be we should be able to log in we are able to log in but when you go to automate code 100 by using the front end by using the front end we cannot input it by using the front end we cannot input it but our test was able to do it our test was able to do it. Is it clear? The understanding? But how long how long does it take for hundred users to enroll hundred users? How long does it take? Let me show you. Now, I will I will um, I can I can do one thing here. Let me let me go to the um, now now can you see result? Can you see analyze result? Mm -hmm. Everyone, take a look here. Can you see result? Analyze result? Analyze result. From result menu, I am clicking on analyze result. Now, see what happens now. Is it too much for, for today? Okay. Now, okay, I will stop very soon. But I am trying to show you something from this execution. What actually happens? So if you come here and, and you saw that how we can make a machine not able to handle something, right? You have seen practically like how we can make a machine, how we can bring a back point, like how we can put it in a back point. It, it is not able to handle it. Now, can you see number of views are how many? 10. So the test executed from 13 or 7, 35 to 13 to 10 28 that means for 3 minutes 
within three minutes we were able to register how many users how many users ten. ten more than hundred users we were able to register right now can you everyone take a look here this is the complete right? the mm -hmm. yeah now take a look here running users can you see the way we have executed like we executed two users then four users six seven ever when it reached ten users can you see from 20 second to to uh, to that point ten user executed and then the user is gradually fall because when all the users are ramped up they keep driving can you see ten user keep driving and then you come here hits per second on the application every second how many hits was in the application it was average 20 20 hits in the application per second it means how many hits on the application you can see everything can you see throughput remember we have discussed throughput in a given time through the data channel how many bytes of data we are passing can you see transaction summary which transaction executed how many times right can you see average transaction response time we can see many things so those things we are going to discuss in details in our future class but again today we have one other thing i want to show you so that is how you can bring the analysis and then you can save the analysis file save as right how you save the analysis you can save the analysis to your this drive and if you go there remember we have created a folder right we have created a folder today i'm going to uh, we have there should be a folder here can you see execution of can you see this folder we have created that folder i will be saving the analysis here okay i'm creating a new folder here for the analysis analysis and I'm going to save the analysis here save now after saving the analysis I want to show one last thing then I will end up our today's session if you go to your drive and can you see here what is the folder that you have created today what is the folder that you have created today I think uh, I have created in performance testing and here can you see this folder that is what we have created our log is stored here right if you go to um, if you go to here can you see log file and can you see how many driver we had how many driver we had mm -hmm. 10 driver yeah. for 10 driver we had 10 file created if you open any of the file right you will see what it did so if you look for iteration ending ending ita each of them how many iteration each of them should execute at 10 iteration can you see iter ending iteration one here keep going ending iteration two ending iteration three ending iteration four ending iteration five ending iteration six seven eight nine ten no more iteration can you see so ten users executed how many times ten times each and they in that way they registered a hundred users and can you see in the log we can see what is the uh, what are the you can see the user session right right what was the user session generated then when you are uh, when you are uh, when you are registering the user you will be able to see what are the if you look for p user id right if you look for p user id from here let's say p user id p user id right can you see automate code 189 this particular driver handled p user 189 then he handled 189 after that he handled p 190 right can you see after that he handled p 191 in that way every time he executed, he took a different user and he registered it. Is it clear? Now, we did a lot of things. Now, the ball is in your foot. What you are going to do? I have recorded everything. 
if I take the same plus 10 times, 